Hey folks, my name is Alex Jackson and this is my 1990 Leyland DAF T244 Expedition Truck House named Welly. This video is sponsored by Bespoke Post. Click the link in the description and use my code FLORB20 for 20% off your first box. I have been building rigs for a number of years now. Um, I kind of started just with a Tacoma and a rooftop tent. Then I moved on to a bowler to the Toyota Hiace van, which you've actually probably seen in another Florb video. I sold that van and it took about a year to find a vehicle that was fuel efficient, reliable, easy to fix, easy to source parts for. And it's like a lot of boxes to check. I really, really wanted to come in 6BT engine. I know the reliability and the power and all that. So I was in Red Deer, Alberta, and I went by a used car lot and there was a Leyland Daft sitting in a used car lot. And I was like, what's going on here? And I started to research it and I found that from the factory, this truck comes with a Cummins 12 valve in it. It checks all the boxes. I just got to build a house on the back. When the truck started, it was just a flat deck truck, nothing on it. The initial cost of the truck, I will tell you, it was $16,500 Canadian. Total maybe spent 60,000, maybe 70,000 Canadian on it. What I have here is a 1990 Leyland Daft T244, which is a ex-British military transport truck. The truck itself weighs about eight, nine tons. Factory from the military, these trucks have what owners have coined the mustache, which it's like two half bumpers up front. It looks kind of funny. There's a big NATO style pintle hitch in the middle. I didn't really like it very much. So I took that off and I built my own like steel bumper, just really, really basic. I basically purchased the truck because of the engine. Uh, I know it's very reliable, very powerful, very torquey, and it's actually got really, really good fuel mileage. I do about 13 miles per gallon in this truck. What I did right away just to get a little bit more power is swap out the injection pump to a rotary injection pump. I also swapped out the transmission that has a uh, 0.67 overdrive on it. So I can now reach almost highway speeds at a reasonable RPM. Swapped out the fuel tank, which is behind this kind of fairing here to a hundred gallon tank. So I can do theoretically 1300 miles, which was pretty great. I also wanted the max amount of storage. So I started building boxes for hoses and electrical and stuff. Built all of these out of steel. Here, I built this tire carrier. These tires weigh 250, 300 pounds. So I made this little crane, just I hoisted up with this. These are old ammo boxes that I've saved from antique stores and I use it for wood storage now. This is a receiver hitch. I will be able to put either bike mechanic stand in here or a table for cooking outside. This is my propane box. 20 pound bottle lasts me like a month and a half. Main toolbox, fluids, spare parts. I got this massive hub nut tool here that I got from a guy in the UK. His name is Matt Payne. I built the entire structure myself. It's steel frame, aluminum skin. And then I built the entire structure around being able to carry bikes because my wife is a professional cyclist. I can fit four bikes inside of my garage. I decided to build the garage on the front of the truck because I wanted to be able to have my water tank where it's kind of best for weight displacement. So what I have is 65 gallons here. Just plug a hose into there and turn on the hose and it fills. Three filters there filtering all the water that comes up to the tap. Large sediment, 10 micron and five micron. And then my hot water heater. This is an isotemp six gallon heat exchanging water heater. I can heat my water with my inverter, but otherwise it just heats while I drive. I have this little outlet here so I can just screw on a hose, have a shower outside. My wife can wash her bike. A little bit of extra storage up there. And yeah, we have shoe storage on the inside of our garage, interior garage door. So this actually swings open into the living area. I also fabricated this roof rack and this ladder, drilled out every single corner hole, cut it with a zip cut and smoothed it out. It was a lot of work. Um, now I have a yoga deck, storage deck up there where you can either hang out or store stuff. Up top here, we have, well, what was supposed to be 560 watts, but is now 460 watts because I put a 100 watt solar panel in series so it stopped the 180 down. Charges my 24 volt battery bank inside to 100 amp hour AGM batteries wired in series to get me 24 volts. With good sunshine, I have zero problems staying charged. Unfortunately in BC, it's really, really cloudy here most of the time. So I've had to be plugged in a lot. I just have a basic 
NOCO G15000 battery charger that just tends my batteries. I got a skylight for my bathroom, I got a skylight for my bedroom, and two Max Air fans, and that is my chimney. And if you look at it closely, you realize that that's a little bowl on top of my chimney. I built these brush guards uh, with my buddy Ray from Haven Garage. Some guy had his rope for his tarp strung out across the road. It was pitch black outside, I didn't see it, and it ripped off my solar panel. So that happened, and then I built these really nice rails on the top. This truck used to have a turret hatch inside of it. I had to cut it out and seal it up because it was leaking so bad. After I sealed up the turret hatch, I had all this ceiling real estate on top, so I built this center head unit console kind of deal. Before I had the whole thing spread out across the window and I couldn't see very well, it's out of my view and all combined into one. It's, it's really efficient and I much prefer it. Also looks a lot better. I wanted a little bit of a cabin, warmer feel, so obviously I did all wood grain stuff. I did fur quarter inch ply for the door panels and wall skins and stuff. I built all the kind of like storage units in here. So I got storage in here, I got storage in here. When I ordered my new gearbox for this truck, this box had all these DAF logos on it. So I used one of these for the door on this console. And Willow obviously has her nice little bed here. So she's really comfortable. She gets to see the road instead of where she usually sits on the floor. I stored my ladder right between the living area and the cab, uh, just on simple brackets. And I just pull that out and hook it on and I have steps. Let's hop on inside. Welcome to mi casa. This is one of two fuse blocks that I have. My batteries and all my electrical system are right here. And then I run two big uh, like cables up through here, down to here, and then run all stuff on the front of the truck off of here. Because the garage is at the front of the vehicle, my bedroom goes on top. So what we have is a full queen size bed. It's actually an ample amount of space. You don't feel claustrophobic or anything like that. I did make the decision to put a skylight directly over our heads. So yeah, anything to open up the space, I did. Shelves towards the front of the vehicle. It's more than ample storage for all of our clothing. We have a max air fan directly over the bed. When it's hot out, you just do exhaust and then you can do a um, intake with the other max air fan. So you get really good air circulation through the cab. I built storage nooks and shelves everywhere I could just to get everything stored away. One of the things I really, really like is all the barn wood. Kind of a compromise between the wife and I. She wanted like white ceilings to brighten it up, but I didn't want just like plain white ceilings. So I put barn wood up there and then painted it white and put some cedar accents in and it turned out really really well. Obviously I got a fire extinguisher because right here I have a wood stove and I actually built this wood stove myself. My grandpa gave me this really really cool cast iron furnace door so I just built a stove around that. My flue pipe is actually exhaust pipe. This is a cubic mini flue pipe exit pipe. Wood storage right here and then my garbage is right here. Garbage and recycling and also just like fire starter and stuff like that. We have a wet bath. Again, I used as much repurposed material as I could. This siding is actually siding off an old barn. The cedar, I mean, that's Canadian cedar. It was just a two by six cedar piece that I ripped down and then uh, treated it. The whole bathroom is completely watertight. I sealed the whole thing with like a waterproof uh, paint and then went over top of it with that and then siliconed it. I have the hot water on a thermostatic mixing valve, so it comes out at the same temperature all day long, so long as there's hot water. I designed this composting toilet myself. It's working like at 80% efficiency. There's like a little bit of an odor. It's not like really bad, but it's an earthy smell and it's quite noticeable, which I don't love. So I actually have a airhead composting toilet on order now and I'm gonna replace it eventually, probably later on this summer. These doors, they were all pulled out of a 80 year old house and I just cut them up to size. I reused these old hinges, kind of polished them up a little bit. I use a Nova Cool 12 volt refrigerator. I was gonna buy a Dometic CFX something and I was gonna buy it secondhand. It turned out to be the wrong fridge. So instead I found these guys and this refrigerator fit 
perfectly right here, which I was really, really happy about. And they're designed and I think manufactured in Vancouver. I used Canadian copper for a lot of my railings. This is all Canadian copper. I made a towel hanger out of an old piece of cedar. Yet again, part of the aesthetic which is really, really important to me to have a, a living space that I really love. This is like a, an old toolbox that I found again in one of the shops. And this has all my cutlery. An inset sink here. So it's just like a, a bar top sink. It's fairly deep. So it's, it's actually like a perfect size for a tiny space, tiny kitchen. The counter is repurposed barn wood. I went to a barn pile and pulled out a whole bunch of two by tens and then glued them together and then put a bar top epoxy on top. And this is the result. I have just like a Camp Chef stove oven intended for outdoor use as a disclaimer. I took the regulator off of the back and then I plumbed it right off the tank in my propane box outside. My gas is actually on a electric solenoid. So when I turn it on, it opens and then the gas comes in. And then when I'm done cooking, I turn it off, it closes and no more gas comes inside the cab. So the lowest risk of having any kind of gas leaks in here. And I do have a gas detector down on the floor. Back in this corner, there was space that I couldn't get to. So what I did is I put an insulated box in the corner here. I can store fruits and vegetables in there for a, a small period of time if I need to, um, or any dry goods that I need. Underneath the counter is actually the dog nook. So my dog Willow will sleep down there and then Right here is all her her food and dog stuff, I suppose. <laughs> my mom made the pillows for Willow. She made my curtains. She made the comforter and pillow slips in her bedroom and also the curtains in her bedroom. And she is a very, very talented seamstress. I built this seating area here to the dimensions of the window because I wanted both people to sit kind of same in the window, but it turns out that your usual sitting area is actually six feet long and this is four and a half feet. So I'm cutting this a foot further back just so I have more leg space because right now it's actually really uncomfortable to sit here for long periods of time. It actually slides out and I actually got this idea off of the Lost Box build. I'm going to improve on it so that eventually I can turn it like this and then actually have like a U-shaped bench area. Right now, obviously the table's a little bit too big it's just one of those design things that you don't think about until you start to use it. Right here are all my electrical readouts, my shunt for the 24 to 12 volt converter. And then this is the readout of the voltage coming off of the converter. And then this is my solar controller. I've got your basic 40 amp EP ever MPPT solar controller, 720 watt, 24 to 12 volt converter. Lots of fuse blocks in this because this is a 12 volt uh, fuse block here the power is like everything in the back half of the house. And then this is 24 volt. Um, and this will actually power the diesel heater that I'll be putting in the truck later on. The biggest lesson that I learned when I started to have to repair stuff is taking the time to do things properly. Last summer, my friend Kevin ran an idea past me to come and build custom van interiors with him. And I've actually gained a lot of experience in being precise and methodical and taking the time to do stuff properly. You know, like I literally built the entire thing by myself. I got like an hour of sanding from my wife and I got some friends to help tack together the initial frame of the truck. Otherwise, everything else was done by me. It's like a massive time commitment and I was always just like, oh, I wanna get out by this time. So I gotta make it happen, I gotta make it happen. And then I'm struggling to get time to, to work on the truck between work and training for my pilot's license. So I kind of rushed a lot of stuff. Take your time, do your research, pick your materials, so on and so forth. That's really, really important. Bespoke Post is a great company that offers themed boxes for people who give a damn. Check out this great box that they sent us that came with all sorts of camping and survival gear. It came with two high quality knives, a hand chainsaw, a bird call, a hammock, a golden moss and activated charcoal scrub bar, a beach blanket, a detailed survival guide, and a cool army-like storage box to keep everything in. Every box has at least $70 in value, but it only costs $45, and the box lineup changes every single month. 
Bespoke Post is very easy to use. You just click the link in the description, scroll to the bottom of the page, and take a simple questionnaire so that Bespoke can tailor your boxes to your interests. You can skip a month anytime and you can swap or exchange your box hassle-free. Bespoke is committed to working with cool, under-the-radar brands here in the US. Since the COVID-19 crisis began, they have bought over $45 million worth of goods from small businesses to support them through these troubling times. So if you want to check out one of these cool boxes, head over to the link in the description and use code FLORB20 for 20% off your first box. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.